because we need to know where we fit in the scheme of things. That gives you a whole different kind of attitude of who you are. A world historical being as opposed to a never gonna ever do anything Negro at large. <laughs> Second, knowledge of ourselves in the world, okay? So after we study the world, we study ourselves in the world. And I've linked it and overlapped it because that's what you have to do. I am related and in and relate. Therefore, I am. I'm related to Tim Moyum. I relate to her. I get my identity as husband, companion, in all things good and pure. You see? If I brutalize her, I get that identity too in relationship. You always who you are in relationship. And suppose you cut off your fundamental relationship with the world and you can only identify with your street or the gang on your street. You're locked. You're deformed in your growth. You're limited in your capacity to grow. Again, Malcolm said we must ask ourselves where we fit in the scheme of things. And God he asks us to see ourselves as world historical beings. And Bethune said, we are as a custodians of a great legacy. We must be proud of our, con our contribution to world civilization. But suppose you don't see yourself as a world being, as a being in the world and of the world at peace in the world and with the world, then you will become a warmonger with your oppressor. We must, in this whole thing of knowing ourselves in the world, we also can form coalitions if we know who we are in the world. We form linkages of our people with other people in the struggle. Not only Palestinians, but the Native Americans in Chiapas. People around the world who are struggling to expand the realm of freedom and justice in the world. Third, is knowledge, we teach knowledge of how to effectively engage the world through service, employment, enterprise, whether it's political, economic, or cultural enterprise. A lot of times people say, well, we, we, we really need education so we can get a job. Well, I got that in there, but that's hung in with the rest of the things we got to do. <laughs> to engage the world effectively is not simply employment. It can also be service. It can also be enterprise, initiative in the political, economic, and cultural realms. So yes, the education must make you able to make a living, but more important, as Du Bois said, it must also make you capable of making a rich and resourceful life. How do you make that? And finally, education teaches us how to direct ourselves, our life, toward good and expansive ends. If education doesn't give you a moral vision of yourself and how you ought to live in your community and the world, it's a bankrupt education. An education that just teaches you how to get a job is nothing but, it's cultivating nothing but vulgar careerism. It must teach you the importance of speaking truth and doing justice, caring for the vulnerable around you, honoring your elders and your ancestors, your parents, of teaching you how to, in fact, cherish and challenge your children, how to relate rightfully with the environment, and how to struggle constantly against evil and always raise up and praise the good. The third issue is reparation. Certainly the movement for reparations is one of the most important initiatives of our time. Its importance is rooted in its relevance as a movement to achieve three basic things. First, justice for our people. Second, accountability for the country. And third, an ethical model for the world. First, a movement for justice for the people. We have been done a great injury. Can anybody doubt that? And we need justice. Second, 
accountability for the country, certainly we must hold the perpetuator of one of the greatest holocausts in human history. We must hold them accountable. And third, <clears throat> and third, the reparations movement is not only a movement for justice for the people and accountability for the country, but it is also an ethical model for the world. And it is an ethical model first on how those who are injured in gross and grievous ways should be treated. See, if we let the white man just do anything to us and do not respond and struggle to not forget and not forgive, but to in fact forge a new future out of our struggle against oppression, then we have dishonored the dead. Yes. Brought questions about the living and also have put in doubt the future generations to come. This struggle is about freedom. This struggle is about not forgetting. This struggle is about honoring those who gave their lives so that we could live full and more meaningful ones. And so we must, in fact, put forth this ethical model of how people must demand justice and how people must be held accountable. But even more important than that, when we talk about an ethical model, we want to talk about how we struggle ourselves. You see, this is what people sometimes don't realize. The reparations movement it's really not about what we get from white people. Right, that's right. It is about what we become as a result of our struggle to heal ourselves by struggling against the people who damaged us. Let me tell you this. This, this is from Fanon and Malcolm. Our position in us organization, Kawita, you can never kill yourself except by struggling against the conditions that damaged you. I'll give you an example. If a woman is being beat up at home or abused at home, I'm sorry to use this example. The only way she can ever gain her sense of dignity is to struggle against that abuse. Not by sitting down and accepting it, but by confronting it on the spot and making the decision that it will end today. That means more than all the books you can read on the subject. Malcolm said it, if you want your manhood back, you must struggle against the people who would deny you that. If you want your womanhood back, you must struggle against the people who would deny you womanhood and turn you into some sexual thing that the world can think of consuming and like a squeezed orange, throw in the waste basket afterwards. There can be no healing except through struggle against the damaging and deforming conditions of oppression so that the reparation movement is not a serious movement unless it is part and parcel of our overall struggle for liberation and a high level of human life. Right. The reparation struggle is important because what it would teach us about ourselves, whether we'll sell our dignity for dollars or even the hope of a dollar. <laughs> or whether we will struggle to raise monuments above the earth that reflect our capacity for human history and progress and that reflects our commitment to not let those who die die in vain. That's what it's about. It ain't about no check. See, that's the lotto you're looking for. <laughs> There are four main issues in reparations. First, the definition of the injury. Second, the responsibility for the injury. 